when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down thy net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and have caught nothing. We haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. I just want to use for a thought. I'm not going to use a subject. I'm going to use a thought today. And I want you to think with me. When God gets in your business, when God gets in your business, Peter's idea of Jesus stepping on his profession rendered him a little wrong, I would say. It just made him a little bit upset that, that Jesus would would step into his field and tell him how to fish. And he called him master. And, and what this actually means was it, was, it was not in the term of Lord, you know, our supreme one. Uh, it was in the term that, that renders him as bivocational in his lifestyle. What I mean by that is that he first thought of him as a carpenter. And a carpenter doesn't have any business telling a fisherman, a professional fisherman at that, on how to fish when all you know how to do is work with wood. But then on the other hand, he had to recognize Jesus as a great man of God, when he called him master, he called him rabbi. And, and this would constitute his thinking because in that same chapter in verses 38 through uh, 41, Jesus stood over his mother-in-law at their request and healed her. So he knew Jesus as a healer because Jesus had just fed people and just done some wonderful works. And, and he had to hear him as a, a leader, a spiritual leader, but what does he know about fishing? So Jesus had to get in his business. <laughs> As per se, you know, you, you, you know, you got some things that that you you tried to do on your own. And Peter said, Lord, I know what I'm doing. And I worked at this all night long. Mm -hmm. And where there were usually fish, there is none. Mm -hmm. They're not biting at night. Right. How many know God lets your 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 life gets dry? Yeah. It, it gets to a point that you have everything you need in order to thrive and survive yeah. uh -huh. and be everything you need to be. Uh -huh. But somehow, all your nest did that night was drag <laughs> and caught a bunch of trash. Right. Isn't that just like our life? Sometimes we just... We keep on living, thinking we're doing something. Right, right, right. And all we're doing is gathering trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we go to draw and pull it out, it ain't nothing but trash. Yeah. Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about the nets that they use. On the, on the lower end was weights. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those weights was to take it deep enough to where the fish were. Mm -hmm. And on the top of the net was floaters 
to keep the net buoyant enough to not sink too low to where they couldn't handle it up top. Right. Now this way our life is we we, we drag and we pull. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and it takes a lot of effort to keep living when you don't have points to live, uh, uh, goals, uh, plans, uh, ideas. Peter had no idea that those fish had moved at the command of Jesus. <laughs> because where he normally collected the fish was good enough to live from day to day. But when God steps in your boat, come on now. Come on. <laughs> or get in your business. It seems like he's meddling, don't it? Yeah, hey, come on. He's he, he trying to tell you something that you already know. Amen. But what you don't understand is the principle yes, yes. of the matter. When you're dealing in your feelings, yes. Peter started dealing in his feelings when he told, he said, he said, Now Lord, you are not a fisherman. And we, now he drags everybody else in that when he's in charge. Right. That's how we do it. When, we, when, we, when we're in trouble, we do, it's everybody else's fault too. I hear you. And now everybody has a responsibility of cleaning out the nets from all of the trash they gather. Right. Well, well. Uh, <laughs> so he puts everybody at work because he's upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes them all clean out the nets and now that all the nets are clean all of the nets have gotten the trash out and I'm tired I'm ready to go home I'm ready to get started tomorrow I'm exhausted I've done everything I can do and Jesus steps on his boat and said let me use your boat for a minute you gotta understand the crowd was pressing Jesus because you gotta understand he had just healed Peter's mother-in-law he had just healed those and then the Bible said that and he called those to himself whom he would use to follow him he was calling them all along the shore come follow me Bartholomew he said, follow me, Matthew. Thaddeus, come on, follow me. And he was choosing them all the way to Jesus, I mean to uh, Peter's boat. And they left what they were doing to follow Jesus. And Jesus, the Bible said, and when he got through speaking, he got through teaching, after asking Simon mm -hmm. to use his boat uh -huh. in the middle of the boat because the crowd was getting all of the revelation, mm -hmm. yeah. but Peter was upset. Simon was upset yeah. Yeah. because he wanted that catch. Yes. Yes. You know how it is, your builders do. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. Yes. Yes. And where you normally get your money, you can't get it. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. <laughs> and you get upset, you get frustrated. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah. Yes. And then it's always your fault. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I told you to go out there and put that scanner out there so that we'll know where the fish were. Yeah. We got technology that can de de determine where they are. Yeah. But what you don't realize is that when Jesus tells them when they let the net down, you go the opposite way. <laughs> When God gets in your business, he'll let you know where you stand with life. Yes, he does. And he'll let you use all your energy. Yes, he will. Yes. All of your thoughts. Yes. Everything. Yes. In order for you to trust him. Yes. And what, what, what he didn't hear him say was, if he would have been listening rather than, rather than doing what he wanted to do, he would have heard him say, come to me. Uh -huh. All ye that labor. And are heavy laden. Yes. And I will give you rest. Yes. 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 Amen. <laughs> See, we miss it, don't we? Amen. Because we got to get it. We got to get life done. We got to get it done the way we want it done. But when God gets in your business, He let life phase by you. 
And you end up wasting time because you start dreaming and thinking about what you got to do. And you put all your energies and consecrations into things that, that you feel like you got to get done. And not give God the time that he needs in order to provide for you like you said he was. You wake up every morning and call him Jehovah Jireh. But you won't let him provide. Huh? You, you get up every morning calling him a healer. But you won't trust him. To heal. Did anybody ever, ever just thought that you had it made? And God allows a crinkle to come into your stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. He gets in your business. Yeah. And he'll allow some things that are not comfortable yeah. to take places. Yeah. Timelines that come up on you that, that you just got to say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm panicking now. Uh -huh. Come on now, have we all panicked? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is where God wants us yes. in order for us to call on him. Yes. Yes. And the thing of it is, is that God didn't, Jesus didn't stop speaking once he stopped teaching. All right. The things that he taught about became life opportunities. Wow. And Jesus said, for your use of your boat, wow. I want to bless you. And Peter thought he was saying, ha ha, you missed it. Wow. You know how it is. You think you hear one thing, but God is saying another. Amen. Come on now. Our minds can play tricks on us. Simon's mind played tricks on him. And he, he, become, he become the comedian of the day. He said, he said a carpenter, y'all, trying to tell a fisherman what to do. <laughs> Jesus looks at him in that same way he looked at his mother-in-law and told him, said, trust me, Peter. Wow. Yes. Wow. He said, launch out into the deep. Yes. In other words, you've been fishing in shallow water. Yes. There's a lot of things can go on in shallow water that you can fool people with. Yes. Come on. Hey. Talk hey. about it. Hey. Anybody ever mud crawl before you learn how to swim? Yes. Oh, see, see y'all don't, don't understand. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying, do you? Mud crawling is when your feet is able to touch the bottom and your top is on top of the water and you walk on the water from the bottom, and you move your arms and fake people out like you're from <laughs> You're right about it, though. That's what a lot of Christians are doing. They're mud crawling. Yeah. They want yeah. people to think that they're deep, but they're really actually walking on the bottom of life. Yeah. And they want people to see what's on top, but really it's what's beneath that's keeping them going. Yeah. But when God put you in the deep, yeah. <laughs> you're going to either sink or swim. I'll never forget when I was seven years old, we was out in California, my, my grandfather's, uh, and, and my grandfather was an outdoorsman. He taught us how to hunt, he taught us how to fish, and my grandfather was one of the first black Navy, uh, I found this out in his last days that he was the first, one of the first black Navy uh, bomb builders. Yeah. He dealt with suffer and, and he made bombs. And then he became a fireman on the ship. One of the black, first blacks. And, and what he did with us one summer, he said, I'm gonna teach y'all how to swim. None of us knew how to swim. He took us out to the creek, and he took us out in just enough water to where we couldn't touch the bottom. And he didn't ask us to jump in, he threw us in. And he didn't throw us all in at the same time because he realized he had to come get us. Because then none of us know how to swim. Came my turn. Matter of fact, I think I was the first one. He threw me out, and I was drinking water. <laughs> and he came out. See, it's just not, it's, it's close enough to where if he had to push me over to stand up. But it was deep enough that I could not get to 
safety. And what he did was he let me go under a couple of times and he jumped in and he rolled over on his back and he said, don't fight me. He said, catch on to me and I'm going to pull you to safety. And he did that and I calmed down and then he took me right back out there. <laughs> and he said, this time, he said, don't fight the water. Right. And it'll bring you right up to the top. Okay, I did that. That's what God is trying to tell you. Wow. Quit fighting life. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And life will bring you right up yes. to the top. Yes. Because when God gets in your business, He doesn't get in your business to hurt you. That's right. He gets in your business to prosper you. Yes, yes. yes. yes He does. In every area of your life. Yes. And when He does this, here's what takes place. There are so many things that God began to do with, with Simon in this one lesson that it changed him forever. Mm -hmm. He thought that he had the right to question Jesus about his creation. But he says to him, not just am I going to do it, he said, but because you ask so sarcastically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because you want to. But what he did not realize, and what we don't realize, is that we might be missing a point in life to where God will give us a life-changing experience. Amen. There was a life-changing experience at the door of Simon. Mm -hmm. The experience that he was about to have was going to be monumental when it comes to the rest of his life. Amen. And the Bible says, and when he had done so, he, he threw the net out. It went back out clean because they had they had they had already cleaned it, cleaned them and, and put them out for use again. But when they threw them out, it was clean, ready for a fresh catch. And this time, they were not going to catch trash. They were only going to catch fish, not trash and fish. Fish. But just fish. Come on. The very thing that you try to clean up on your own will catch the, the kinds of trash that where you have to keep on cleaning up yourself. But the Bible says that when he threw his net out for the catch, it was such a large number of fish that it began to break the nets. Not just one net, but the nets. And then he began to say to himself, there is more than enough for me. He called for his partners. And he told him, he said, bring your nets. Got two of <laughs> I want to share the blessing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Huh? Mm -hmm. But whenever you talk about just enough for yourself, well, you're for it no more. God can't get no more in there. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. When you're just trying to catch enough for you and your family, uh -huh. and not think about the family of God. Yes. Yes. Come on, no say word. that. Yes. <laughs> All those. Fishermen belong to God. And there is no way God going to bless you without you blessing somebody else. It's not intended for you alone. Your anointing is not for you. Your fishing of men is not just for you and your family. It's for everybody in your Influence, and you can do this because you're now dealing with a clean net. You're dealing with a clean God. You're dealing with a new life. You've been changed for a reason. When Peter started pulling the fish in, 
he looked at Jesus as a different man. He wasn't marrying Joseph's boy no more. He was the son of God. You don't hear me. Only God knows where his creation is. Have you noticed anything that is precious? God got it hid in the earth and you have to go get it. It don't just fall to you. God has to point you to it. And when he points you to it, then he says, now get to work. And when you do what he says do, when he says do it, you have more than enough. That's what I'm trying to do with full love. I'm trying to let God lead me. I clean the net and I, God has pushed out all the trash. Oh, you don't hear me. There's a reason why a lot of things are not happening. There's a reason why a lot of people are not around you like they used to be. They could have been a hindrance to you. They could have been a, 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 a side traction to you. They could have been a separator from you. They, they could have had your mind on other things. God had to do this. To let you get to the end of your strength. To let you get to the end of what you can do. Hallelujah, somebody. And then he then says, when he gets in your business, he changes you forever. The net that drags with the weight on the bottom and the floats on the top limits us. Because God's got a whole big old sea called the world. Yes. That has no limitation. Yes. Your nets have been designed to only influence a few people. Yes. But God is trying to make full armor worldwide. Yes. And you stuck in local. Yes. You stuck in the house that you live in. Yes. You stuck in the body you live in. But I happen to believe that there's more inside me than there is to give to you. Yes. God wants me to go worldwide. Yes. And that's where I'm going. Yes. That's what I'm going to do. And if you want to go, let's go. But if you don't want to go, please don't hinder me. Oh, you don't hear me. Look at your neighbor and say, please don't hinder me. Yeah, get your mind out of lover because there's more to life than lover. Hallelujah. The older I get, the more I want to go. Now I'm free to go. I ain't got no more babies at the house. You don't hear me? I got to go. Hallelujah. I've grown enough that I got so much to give. And I want to give it all. Somebody knew where I was going with that one. The world needs you. There's more people need you. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes. And you got to get yourself ready. Yes. Quit messing with your nets all day long. All right. <laughs> Telling God what you don't have. Right. You are looking for a job at three thirty? <laughs> better get up. <laughs> and then you ask God to lead you to your job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Some of you might be guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Say it. But you got to know that you got to seek him while he might be found. He said, if you call on me, I'll answer. If you knock, the door will be open. Hallelujah. He said, ask me. I'll give you. Yes. All you have to do is ask my father in my name. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. And he'll do it for you if you believe it. Yes. And doubt yes. not. Yes. Look at somebody and say, get the trash out of your life. Yes. So God can speak to you. Yes. It's going to take you to do that. Yes. God points out the trash. Yes. Yes. Let, let, me, let me tell you something though. There's a difference between trash and garbage. All right. Run it down. Run it down. Run it down. All right. Trash can be recycled. That's right. Garbage is just stinky. Ah, yes, sir. Not only when you take it out, it just plum stinks. Yes. Yes. But trash is recyclable. Yes, it is. 
into something all over again. Yeah, garbage is recyclable, but it's a stinky recycle. I'm telling you, honey, there's a difference. <laughs> Which one would you rather deal with then? Okay. That's what I'm telling you. And it's the little things that spoils the vine. Yeah. It's not the big items. It's the little things. Little foxes spoil the vine. Now, now, we think of a fox fox. But that's not what it's talking about. There's a plant that has a tail like a fox. And it, that's what it is. It gets wrapped up in vine. And it chokes the vine out. Yeah. Yeah. Little little bitty foxes. Yeah. Choke out life. Yes. Yeah. Little things that you don't confess. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, if you got iniquity in your heart. Yeah. 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 Pete, I know you're cussing already. I know it. You got a cussing spirit. Yeah. But that doesn't exclude you from my choosing. I choose you. Yeah. Because that's not you, that's what you do. Yeah. Come on now. See, God don't choose us. <laughs> I'm glad he chooses me. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Not for what I do, yeah. but for who I am. Yeah. He looked beyond all my heart and he saw my need. So don't think God chose you just because you, you all Mr. Wonderful or Miss Wonderful. <laughs> He chose you because he has a redeeming, a redeemable quality yes. that he put in your life in spite of how stupid you act. Yes. Me, I'm going to put me there. In, in order, no matter how crazy I act. Yes. So don't go out here and say, Bishop was calling me stupid. No, I'm saying no, no matter how I act, God still got a call in my life. Yes. And on my life. Amen. And it's up to me to search my net. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And say, God, I see where I've been leaking at. Yeah. I see where my net has been severed at. And I gotta fix this. <laughs> you gotta fix it. For you, my dear lovers, you gotta fix it. <laughs> Go back and fix it. You gotta sing the can spiritual song. I gotta clean up. Yes. What, I what I messed up, yes. starting my life over again. Yes. 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 I mean, you know, we gotta clean up. Can nobody clean it up for you? You gotta confess your own sin, your own fault. Yes. And it'll work for you. Amen. And when God gets in your business, Business. He gonna make you take a second look. Yeah. Yes, he will. Right. And when you look at it this time, it can be a difference maker. Amen. When you let God put a light on it. Amen. So thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for giving in my business. Thank you, my In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.